Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you today? I'm so good. How are you? Awesome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year indeed. Yes. Yay. So excited for this episode. We're going to talk all about fat diets, detoxes, cleanses, because we know there is so much confusion out there right now. But Vicki, before we get into that, tell us what you are doing to nourish yourself right now. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think um, as an NTP, I've kind of got like the food stuff down. I know what makes me feel good from a food perspective, right? So I'm just eating the foods that nourish my body, so real food and things like that. Um, but where I've been focusing my attention more so is on like the mental and the spiritual aspect. So um, I've actually been being a little selfish and that's kind of how I'm nourishing myself lately. So to me, that means saying no to things that drain my energy um, because I'm a bit of a people pleaser. So I tend to like say yes to everything and then like go, go, go. And then I crash hard. So I've been really working on saying no to things and being selfish in that way and just looking out for myself and protecting my own energy because ain't nobody else going to do it for me. So your girl has to look out for herself. And mm -hmm. um, it's been, yeah, it's been really going well so far. That's awesome. And sometimes it is so darn hard to say no to things. Like yeah. it seems like it should be so easy, but it's really not, mm -hmm. especially for people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And especially with the holidays that just happened, you know, everybody wants to do everything. And it's just like, if I say yes to everything, I know that it's going to make me feel terrible. So yep. yeah, you got to say no. But the other thing that I think is super cool is just that you're recognizing the fact that you need to take the time to focus more on yourself. Because I think that that's sometimes the hardest time or hardest part for people is to actually acknowledge like, I know I need to do something for myself, but I don't know what it is. And so just really honing in and being selfish and saying no and taking care of your mind, body, soul more than like anything. I just think that that's probably more important than like the foods that we could be eating or the workouts that we could do be, be doing or whatever, you know? So absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. I feel like I'm kind of right there with you this year. You know, I, I feel like it's yeah. not about like what I'm eating. It's more about like what I'm doing to protect my, my mind space, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, that's ultimately what it all boils down to is I think your mind space. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. You and me, girl. I just, I had all the feels for when you were talking about that. <laughs> oh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> now, Vicki, cool. you did just recently do a social media detox. Do you want to go into that just yeah. a little bit more? And because it kind of seems like that goes in line with how you're nourishing yourself. It it does. It really does. I think the back half of 2018, I realized um, just a lot of tendencies that I had. And this is kind of where I've, you know, shifted my focus to being a little, a little bit more selfish, like I said. Um, and one of my tendencies is like, I'm a social media addict. I think we all are. So like, I'll catch myself just scrolling for no reason. And God only knows how much time has passed. And I could have been doing something so much more productive. And there's also that like comparison trap that's easy to fall into on social media, um, especially as an entrepreneur and somebody who's trying to grow my own business. Uh, it's so easy when all you're seeing is other people who are trying to do the same thing and like to compare yourself to them. So on, I think it was the 23rd of December before the holidays, I deleted Facebook and Instagram off my phone because I just like needed that space away. And honestly, who needs to be scrolling Instagram when you're like hanging out with your family on Christmas day anyways? Like, no, that's not important. So I deleted it. I wasn't on there at all for like four or five days. Um, it was really eye opening because at first I was just like reaching for my phone out of habit just to like check something. Um, so that was kind of eye opening. That was like the first day. And then after I got through that and realized there was nothing to check, it was like a breath of fresh air. Like I, like felt like the shackles had been removed. Like I was like being more productive. I was just like relaxing and being way more present in the moment, enjoying time with my family. And it was so amazing. And then I came back and just like, but like wasn't posting or anything like at all. So that was like my ease back into it. Um, did that for a few days and now I'm kind of back full fledged into it and a little bit falling into old habits of being a little too scrolly. So I'm trying to get better at that setting time limits on that like iPhone thing that tells you when to get off your phone and like actually sticking to them and not just like 
kidding, ignore, like, no, it's time to get off. So um, the goal is to get so much better with my social media and how I use that time in 2019. I wish that they would get rid of that ignore button. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Because it's, so it's easy just, to just be like, no. Nope. Yeah, you're just like, meh, I'm not really into it. But I mean, if I had to go in to like settings and redo whatever, I probably wouldn't. But since the option is right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll totally. write a letter That's, for us to someone. About yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I feel like we all need to do that social media detox like three or four times out of the year, just like a cleanse, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Just, I'm just, I'm going to. Yeah. I've heard of some people doing it like once a week, like social media free Sunday or mm-hmm. Saturday or whatever. That's good. I like that. that. just have that one day a week where it's like, no, phone is just in airplane mode or whatever. Mm -hmm. That is smart. Mm -hmm. That is really smart. It was so interesting to me though, to hear about how the first day you were just like unconsciously like going for your phone back and forth. I mean, it's wild the habits that we've got, like how our brain just that thought process is like, Ooh, what's going on on Instagram? You know? And it's just like, yeah. So it's really nice that you took the time to just separate, spend time with your family and really just be productive on your own stuff, really focus on your own goals. Man, imagine if everybody did that at the end of the year, beginning of the year, like how goal producing <laughs> they would be. Right. And then you would have to yeah. kick yourself in the butt <clears throat> for not achieving or accomplishing those goals that you wrote down after doing a social media de- detox for four days or something. <laughs> right? I love wow. it. That's yeah. a really good, I think we just started a new trend there. <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> Trademark that bad boy. Dude, seriously, that's smart. <laughs> that's smart. I bet we'd get a lot more done. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Well, very cool. Yeah, so, it's, you know, it's funny that we talk about this because since we're talking all about detoxes today and cleanses and fat <laughs> diets, you know, for the most part, we just think about food and, you know, things that we are putting into our body. But mm-hmm. I just happened to read on, on Instagram today, but it's from uh, The Balance B, and I don't actually know her at all, like just saw this randomly today, but uh, she had, it was New Year's Detox to unfollow toxic diet slash fitness accounts and any other accounts that make you feel bad about yourself. And this may also mean unfollowing or muting friends and family who frequently talk about their dieting on social media. Hmm. And I just thought that was so interesting because I mean, I wasn't even really like when we talked about doing this podcast, I had, I, that was not on my radar at mm-hmm. all, but the universe was just yeah. like, here you go, Casey, talk about this as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that ties into how we were talking, like, you got to get your mind right. It's not just mm-hmm. about the food. And if you are just seeing things that are bringing you down all day on social media, either unfollow them or delete the app and like, go live your own real life outside of your phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm totally going to unfollow that registered dietitian who was bashing nutritionists today. Yes, because please. I, I don't need that. So that's not nice. No. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think it's so true. You know, I think a lot of people, especially they start thinking about the beginning of the year and it's like, oh man, I've got to start eating healthy and I got to start going to the gym and exercising. But I feel like there's so many areas of our life where we could actually do like a quote unquote detox with stuff like, you know, eliminating social media, you know, or just less screen time, right? Getting to bed earlier, like other practices to really nourish our bodies and take care of ourselves, you know, getting up and going for a walk first thing in the morning or getting more sunshine. You know, I think these are things that people don't typically tend to think about and they're just as important as like eating healthy and working out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So... I think that there's a lot of stuff that hopefully, I mean, you know, I think it takes time too. It's just a journey, but it's like, we got to train our brains. There's more than just like food and what we do with movement for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Hmm. definitely. All right. So we all uh, asked our audiences for a call for questions, but Vicki, before we get into the questions, do you want to tell us a little bit how you got into being an NTP and your uh, fabulous platform of Restoring Roots? Sure. So I think like most NTPs or nutritional therapy practitioners, uh, we come to the program because we had some sort of life experience. Um, Maybe we were in a dark place or we struggled with our own health issues uh, and we're longing for answers. And that kind of brought us along the way to the path of the program. 
So uh, that is my story too. I struggled with a ton of digestive issues um, right after I graduated high school and looked for answers for probably like a year and a half with various tests and doctors and things uh, before I was given the diagnosis of just gastroparesis, which is basically just like delayed stomach emptying um, because I was like really full and bloated. I would like literally randomly throw up in the middle of the night, I think because there was nowhere for the food to go. Um, so through that, they basically told me like eat a low fiber, low fat diet, which basically is carbs, <laughs> like processed carbs and low fat dairy and things like that, which we know is just not the way to go at all. Uh, so that didn't help at all. I was also on um, an antacid, like a Prilosec, um, only like a prescription version of that. That wasn't doing me any favors either. So I was miserable with digestive issues um, for a couple years there and then decided that there had to be like a way to fix this because they basically told me like it, it was never going to like go away pretty much. I would just have to like manage it. Um, so I found like the paleo diet actually through Emily Schraub and her 21 day it was a 21 day superhero challenge at that time and so I did 21 days of like a strict paleo diet and literally just in those 21 days of taking out things like gluten and dairy um alone like made my digestion so much better I could not even believe it and so I just kept eating that way and it just like made me really curious to learn more about nutrition and things like that um, and all of the things that Emily kind of talks about on her platform. So she's also an NTP. Um, so that's kind of how I was introduced through the program was through her and her training because I loved what she was talking about. And I thought it was so interesting. And I was just like spending all my free time, like researching nutrition and things like that. And I was like, I kind of want to do this like for real, like for a job and help other people. Cause I couldn't believe how much just changing my diet to real food like literally changed my life so much and so many other ways too um so that's why i decided to pursue the program so i could help other people and just learn all the things that i was basically doing on my own time in a structured setting with a certification um so that's what brought me there and i'm so glad that i did it i've never felt better in my own health I feel empowered to help other people with their health, um, my friends and my family, and now my own clients. You know, I'm the owner and founder of Restoring Roots Wellness. So I have my own business now, and I'm so thrilled to be able to help other people in the same way that I was able to help myself with real food. Um, it's just, yeah, it's such a blessing, I think. Like, little things, like changing your diet, how far they can go, and changing your mindset. You know, my mindset has changed a lot along the way, too. I think with the help, um, with the help of the NTA, just as to more of an abundance mindset and how can I nourish my body instead of like the restrictive diet mindset, which is, is what I was caught up in before too. It was just so toxic and all of that has changed my life. And now I'm just excited to help other people in that same way. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting how just like, I don't know how much your mindset changes going through the NTP program and just surrounding yourself with so many positive people. I mean, I look back at, you know, how Facebook always has those memories that pop up. I mean, I look at some of mine from six, seven years ago and it was just like so negative and just yeah. you know, like bitching on social media. And I'm like, oh, Casey, like, how did you write that? I mean, it's just annoying to me, but I mean, it's just interesting to see how far we have all come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I love what you said about like the abundance mindset because it's so true. Like so many people go to the doctors and get diagnosed with something and they're like, oh man, now I have to stop eating gluten and sugar and like all these foods. It's like, what the heck am I going to eat? And as NTPs, we think about like all the things that we can eat. Mm -hmm. And it's just so cool to teach people about that kind of stuff because it's like, so you're telling me I literally can eat protein, vegetables, and fat. It's like, what what do I have left to eat? It's like, do you know the possibilities with all that stuff? Like, mm. do you know what you can do with fermented foods and blah, 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 blah? So it is, it's super cool just to like have this gift to like educate the world about like, yeah, you can't eat all the crack and, crap and junk that we have out there, but you have like so many other options. Um, yeah. Well, you got lucky by finally Emily Strom and like a lot of the, you know, paleo type, you know, dietary protocol stuff. So just kind of like with your symptoms and like your health journey, where would you like suggest people like start with like making dietary changes? 
with what you had going I think on? The, yeah. So for me, um, I think the biggest two triggers for me were gluten and dairy. I don't think that's the case for everybody, but I think it's the case for a lot of people um, mm-hmm. just because they're inflammatory, they're damaging to the gut. So I think you could start by taking out those two things alone and doing that for like four to six weeks and seeing how you feel. Like I said, I felt so much better in a matter of like three weeks. Um, So you could try that and basically just like ditching the processed food. Like if it comes in a package, probably don't eat it unless it has like one ingredient like rice or like almond milk or something like that. So, you know, ditching the processed foods and I would remove things like gluten and dairy, just because like I said, those are such big triggers for people with gut issues. Um, They can really flare a lot of stuff. Um, So starting there, taking it out for a while and just eating real food, I think that alone will go a long way. Mm -hmm. Yep. A a pill is not the answer, people. No, a pill was making me worse. That was not the answer. And if your doctor is just telling you that you're going to have to deal with your disease or illness, whatever it is for the rest of your life, here, just take this pill. We're going to manage your symptoms. Don't believe that. That You have to look harder for yourself because you can feel so much better. um, And there are more answers. You just might have to dig a little bit deeper and find a different doctor. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And go through the NTA program. No kidding. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hashtag not sponsored yet. (laughs) Yet. Yet. I love that. Megan, you know, you bring up a really good point as we are going into this season where everybody is like, oh, I want to get healthy and, you know, I need to do this, this, and this. But they want the quick fix Mm -hmm. of like, oh, let me just do this three-day cleanse where I take a bunch of pills and basically shit my pants out and or or shit my pants. And, you know, it's going to be – I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Yeah. Hell yeah. (laughs) That is just so not the way to go. I mean, if anybody – if you're seeing anything advertised, whether it be like a tea, a shake – some kind of pill and it's a quick fix or lose this amount of weight in seven days. It's BS you guys, or Mm -hmm. you're really, like I said, just crapping your pants Mm -hmm. and it's, you're not actually getting any long-term benefit from it unless you bought stock and Charmin beforehand, but (laughs) you know, so lifestyle changes. Yeah, exactly. Let's, answer a few audience questions if you're cool with that Vicky. So we've had kind of the same question is do detoxes <clears throat> damage you or like are they good or bad for you? Do they damage you? That's that's an interesting way to put it. Um, kind so of I think oh, yeah it is a little bit of a loaded question. No go ahead. Um oh. I think that cleanses and detoxes are unnecessary for the most part because, and I'm saying this in like in the way, in the traditional way that I would think of like a cleanse or detox. So, you know, like a juice cleanse or or like you're only drinking like water and lemon or, you know, having your certain amount of juices or salads with like no protein or anything on them a day. Like that's what I kind of think of when I think of like a detox or a cleanse. I think if you just, remove the lifeless processed food out of your diet. Like we just kind of talked about, you're eating all the vegetables, you're eating protein, you're eating a ton of quality fat, animal products. If you do that alone, that's going to go a long way to unburden your body. You know, if you're drinking clean water, if you're moving your body and if you're removing toxic, you know, cleaning products and beauty products and things like that from your life, that right there is going to take such a burden off your body that I don't think that the cleanse is necessary. I don't know that it's necessarily, I don't know how you would define damaging. I think that they can be dangerous for people with blood sugar issues when you're literally not eating like any food or you're drinking just like fruit juice. Oh my gosh. And if you have sugar handling issues, like you're just going to crash so hard and that's going to take a really widespread toll on your body. So definitely wouldn't recommend anything like that when you have sugar handling issues with, which so many people do, Mm -hmm. especially if you're eating a standard American diet and now you're turning to a thing like a cleanse is like this miracle pill to help you like lose weight or whatever the reason is like that. Yeah, that probably is more damaging than anything to your body because you're depriving yourself of food and you're taking your blood sugar on a crazy roller coaster 
So I think that's when it can go too far. We don't need to deprive ourselves of nutrients because that's another, I guess, maybe damaging thing of a cleanse is you're not giving your body the nutrients that it needs to do its job, which is to survive and keep you healthy. So that's stressful to your body. So now you have a stress response because your body's stressed out and it thinks, you know, it's a famine because it's not getting any food and the nutrients that it needs. And now that's not good either. So now you're stressing yourself out and you're having blood sugar and probably handling issues. So uh, yeah, I think that those things, uh, I would guess I would classify them as damaging and not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Mm-hmm. Me too. I Yay team. Doing, yeah. I mean, I think doing like intermittent fasting or like a day of like, you know, fasting so you're cleansing is a different story but these people that are like i'm gonna do a seven day or ten day juice cleanse right and then you talk about blood sugar handling issues mm-hmm. yeah or people that are like i'm just gonna eat salads for breakfast lunch and dinner but then they're like maybe putting crappy dressing on there or just not getting a whole lot of variety then yeah you're doing yourself a disservice with you know vitamin and mineral absorption and nutrient sufficiency so there's definitely a lot of really good points to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think, and to your point girl. about intermittent fasting, sorry. Um, mm-hmm. I think like it can be really helpful. Like you don't have to fast for like a long period of time to have benefits of fasting, I guess is what I want to say. You can stop eating dinner at 7 p.m. at night and don't eat breakfast until 7 or 8 p.m. the next day. Okay. That's a 12, 13 hour fast. Like that's good for your body to have that time to kind of clean house. And you don't have to be digesting a heavy meal when you go to bed and then turn around and eat breakfast again. Like it is good to kind of give your body that time to clean house, like I said. Um, But literally just fasting from breakfast to dinner for like 12 hours right there. That's, that's good. You know, like that will be beneficial too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, just, I think people eat way too late and then we're kind of all in this, you know, social norm of like waking up and eating breakfast. Um, Sometimes too, when your body's not even necessarily hungry and like you just don't need food yet. So I think it's really more, I know kind of like mindset and tapping into like, you know, just learning more about yourself and tapping into like what your body's needs are and like, I guess your own whatever needs. (laughs) I can't think of another word, but um, yeah, I mean like if you wake up and you're not hungry, don't freaking eat breakfast, like write it out, you know, give it a couple hours and then eat something nutrient dense. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right. So I think we kind of answered this question, but it's uh, would love to hear more about juice cleanses, good, bad, or depends. Mm-hmm. And this is from my friend Lexi over at Style High City. She is a fashion blogger. Mm, cool. Hello, yeah. Lexi. That's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we did kind of just answer it, though. Like, if you... I don't think it's necessary, especially long term. Um, I think, like we said, you're just going to cause more stress to your body and you're probably going to have blood sugar issues um, because you're just drinking fruit and vegetables. You're not getting any any protein or fat in there. Um, So I would say nay to the juice cleanse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not to say that like having a juice in a day is a bad thing. I mean, we're not saying that, guys. Mm-hmm. we're just saying like if you're going to go gung-ho because it's the new year and hop on this juice cleanse train because you think it's going to clean you out and you're going to flush toxins a little bit weight, I mean, I'm sure you'll have some benefits, but you might have more side effects from it in terms of symptoms that pop up versus the benefit that it's going to do for your blood sugar and your organs and everything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. That's, our, that's our point for sure. Yeah, because I mean, you guys know I love my celery juice. <laughs> I totally <laughs> hopped on that bandwagon, but I actually like really yeah. look forward to it every day. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I still need I still need to try celery juice. It's been on my list of things. Talk about fad diets. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. celery juice <laughs> know, right? seems really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Casey, are you juicing that every single morning? Just about. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's really funny because I store my juicer in the microwave. Because it's like the perfect place. It's so yeah. convenient. It's you right don't there. use the microwave. <laughs> I know, right? And yeah. then if I'm ever tempted to use the microwave, like to heat up my coffee, then it's like, oh crap! I'd have to take out the juice. <laughs> that. <laughs> That's hilarious, right? But it's so perfect because I mean, yeah. they do, it's a process. They do take up quite a bit of room, and it adds 16 minutes to my morning routine. 
too. Well, and Ooh. cleaning the juicer. Yeah, that includes yeah. cleaning it. I've, oh, I've gotten okay. it down. Okay. Wow. I'm impressed. 16 minutes. Man, when, every time I use a juicer, it's like an hour or something process. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. What the hell am I juicing? Yeah. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I make a giant pitcher full of something and then we put it into like kombucha bottles just to make it worth it. <laughs> oh yeah. See, I just pour it straight into a mason jar yeah. and then we're good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I need to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. So we've covered the base on juicing. So here's another audience question that we had. So what are the signs to look for to see that something is a fad diet or like a cleanse versus beneficial? I think red flags for me are anything that's like super extreme like just eating one type of food like all day every day or removing like massive groups of food and I'm not talking about removing processed food like we just talking about I'm talking about removing like entire like lots of food so you're literally only eating like a few things or like one thing like I just said like those are red flags like no there is too much nutrients and so many other types of foods like you don't need to cut out all those foods that's that just seems weird to me Mm -hmm. um anything that makes any crazy claims, like you're going to lose 10 pounds in a week or, you know, especially like around weight loss claims, I think if it's like super crazy, like if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. That's another red flag. Um, so I think those are the two biggest things to look at. If, you know, you can sometimes smell a scheme from a mile away. So yeah, if it's questionable and you think that sounds crazy, like it's probably crazy. Mm-hmm. I saw this really funny meme. I forget exactly what it said, but it was like, yeah, my New Year's diet is to lick a carrot and then stare at my, a picture of myself naked. It'd be mad. <laughs> what the oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. There was something else that was like funny too, but you're just like, oh my gosh. So yeah. So you can knock those out in like one night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> that's hilarious your diet tells you just to lick a food group yeah don't go, food, don't go for it that could be bad yeah. or like smell something but don't eat it yeah right <laughs> like no yeah do not buy the no. cake just to smell it and throw it in the trash <laughs> no yeah <laughs> yeah and anything that comes like in a in a package you know like yeah, what you were mentioning mm-hmm. like if you're if you buy like a tub of protein or like a package of shakes or something like that, anything that's got a, you know, a long ingredient list label on it, it's probably not the diet that you want to be doing. Mm-hmm. So definitely mm-hmm. like Vicky mentioned earlier, just stick into whole foods, right? Like animals, plants, good healthy fats, nothing that comes in a box. Cause honey, that ain't going to change your life and uh, be the quick fix. I promise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> for sure all right here's another question this is from katie brewing how do you say her last name Glado. glad you that's my mom <gasps> oh! <laughs> hi <laughs> mama <laughs> she wants to know when detoxing how do you support the organs affected is it necessary to flush out mm. yeah that's a that's a good question mom good um question, i would mama. say <laughs> So when detoxing, and this is something I think that's important to keep in mind, um, especially with detoxing, it is a terrible idea to do a detox if your detoxification pathways aren't open because everything's going to back up and recirculate and you're just going to have more issues than you started with. So our detoxification pathways need to be open. So yes, you do need to be supporting the organs of detox. So um, there's actually a lot of processes in your body that's involved with detox. So your liver is obviously a really big one. I think most people think about, um, your kidneys is another one. So making sure you're drinking a ton of clean filtered water to help flush everything out through the urine. Um, that will also help keep your bowels moving. If you're dehydrated, it's more likely that you'll be constipated. So we don't want constipation either. We want to make sure we're having bowel movements daily to keep things moving. Um, your skin is another organ of detox. So making sure that we're sweating. So you can go to a sauna, uh, bonus points. If it's an infrared sauna, you can just like have a sweaty workout 
anything that helps you just sweat and get all that stuff out through your skin. That's another really great way to support your body um, when detoxing uh, and just like moving around. So supporting your lymph system. So um, your lymph is kind of like the first filter that will filter things before it goes on to your liver. So it's helpful to your lymph moves really, really slow. So you kind of need to like move around to get it moving. So um, like jumping rope or like going for a jog, like moving your body. That's a good way. You can also do like dry brushing. So um, you can look up online how to dry brush. Basically, if you get like a natural bristled brush and you're, you know, brushing the bottoms of your feet and then up your legs, kind of moving from the bottom up to the center of your body, your arms and back, everything the same way, kind of coming up into the center of your body. Um, dry brushing can be really great for the limp. So I think, yes, you need to make sure you're supporting all of those organs and all those detox pathways, because like I said, otherwise it's not going to excrete and actually exit the body. All the things that you're like moving or detoxing, uh, we want them to leave the body and not recirculate. So uh, yes, mother, you should definitely support those organs and um, keep things moving right along. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you recommend for like to support your liver? I do. Yeah. So liver support is really great um, when you're detoxing. And that is kind of like, so when I think of detoxes, like a liver, I don't want to use the word cleanse, but liver support is one of the things that I will always stand behind because our liver does so, so much for us. And it gets overburdened because we live in a super toxic world and we're eating toxic man-made food that our body doesn't recognize. So I do think it's good to support your liver. Um, you can do that with food. So like things like bitter greens, so like arugula, um, what else is kind of bitter, like any dandelion. bitter dandelion. Yeah, that's a good one. Dandelion root. You can get dandelion root tea or like dandy blend, which is really delicious. It tastes kind of like coffee. I know Love Casey uh, got me onto dandy blend when I quit coffee. It's super yummy. That's really great. Um, beets are another really good food for the liver and the gallbladder. So you can eat them raw. You can roast them. You can eat the greens on the beets too. Um, just like cut those bad boys up, put them in a salad. That's another good uh, food source. And then you can do things like milk thistle, like a little bit of targeted supplement support. I'm hesitant to recommend any other specific like herbs or supplements for the liver because it's very bio-individual. But if you're working with a practitioner, um, it's likely at some point you might do some liver support. Um, so like for me, I do a lot of liver support in my practice because I like to work with women in their hormones. And that's a big guy for our hormone health is the liver. So um, working with a practitioner to find a liver supporting supplement that works specifically for you. Um, but, you know, nutrients like magnesium, zinc, selenium, vitamin B6, those are all really great for supporting our detox pathways and our liver and things like that. Um, but I would recommend choosing a supplement under a practitioner's care. But you can do a lot with food, like I just mentioned, and dayline routine and things like that. And those other uh, detox things that I mentioned, like sweating and drinking a bunch of water, like those things will all go a long way too. Mm -hmm. Have you ever drank too much dandy blend? <laughs> No, have you? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> Did you poop your pants, Casey? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It was like an emergency trip to the bathroom. It was like, oh my gosh. Oh no. <laughs> so yeah, you can definitely drink too much of it. It was just like one of those really cold days where you just want warm stuff. And I don't like tea, so just had one too many dandy blends and <laughs> one too many gotcha uh, yeah. uh, so at least you know your uh, at least you know your uh, detox pathways were open yeah they were yeah open. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> <clears throat> good good tip so anyone out there converting from coffee to dandy blend now you know you've been warned mm -hmm. yes Exactly. Take it slow. Definitely. Or just don't drink four cups. So yeah, one or the other. Um, here's, here's another question that I think us NTPs, it's interesting to talk about. What do people think that they're detoxing from? Ooh, right? that's a good question. I can give, I feel like if you want a little more background, I can give you more background on this question. Okay. Go ahead and you can start and then I'll, 
I'll lead you. I think I'll I'll, I'll use my lifeline. Give me more background. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it was my friend LJ. He was kind of wondering. He's like, okay, so if people are needing to do a detox, like, does that mean that they like their kidneys aren't working properly? Or is it like, what do they think they have to detox from? Is it more environmental or is it sugar? Mm-hmm. Mm. Or, dude, I can, I can tell you right now that before I was an NTP, I totally thought that detoxing was like probably flushing fat out of my body. And like, yeah, that's what I thought it was. I had no clue about like heavy metals and toxic pollutants and the chemicals that are in our skincare and in our food. That shit never crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't know. I just, I had to tell you, I guess, how naive. And I think that's, that's probably what a lot of people think, you mm-hmm. know? I think especially this time of year, if you're looking to do a detox or a cleanse right now, it's probably because you're trying to lose weight. And mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot to unpack there. Like, you know, why do you feel like you need to lose weight? Why are we always trying to make ourselves smaller, you know? And like, why is that the number one thing that we focus on right in January? Like, oh, I have to be smaller and lose weight. Like, girl, no, there are way more important things that you could be doing this year than losing weight. Yeah. But anyways, um, so yeah, I think, like you said, uh, Megan, it's a lot of people just like, think if they detox, they're just going to like, It'll burn fat away. It's just gonna like magically melt off <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I think like a lot of other people, like there's a lot of detoxes. So there's like sugar detoxes and things like that, which are beneficial, right? It's good to quit sugar and come off of that or like detox from it. Um, then there's also things like you said, like the heavy metal detoxes and things like that, which have a time and a place with the you know the right practitioner and things like that. Um, but I don't know. I think people think they're detoxing. For me, when I think detox, I think like chemicals and pollutants and things like that. But again, I'm an NTP, so that's like where my mind goes. Um, but I think it depends on the person. And I don't know. What do you guys think you're detoxing from? I want to ask. I want to know what everybody else thinks they're detoxing from because now yeah. I'm curious. We should, we should ask our Instagrams again because I would be curious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, I told you guys what I thought I used to be detoxing from. So mm, yeah, yeah I, remember, <laughs> I remember thinking, you know, like you only did a juice cleanse or a detox just to lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. I think and that's I mean, what the majority of people do them for too. Like I said, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. which is such a bummer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's really sad. I mean, like I said, I was like Vicky, I mean, you're ahead of the game there. Like I'm detoxing from chemicals and shit that might be in my food that I got exposed to in terms of pesticides and insecticides and herbicides and all this crap that's in our air and water. I would have never used to thought like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But I, I think that if more people actually started to realize that those are definitely factors, I think it would also really contribute to the decisions on what they put in their body in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so right. Like the the best, like I said earlier, like the best way to quote detox and support your body that way is to eliminate your exposure from the get go. So getting rid of the processed foods, switching to safer skincare, beauty products, cleaning products, mm-hmm. filtering your water, buying organic food, you know, all of those things. Once you start doing those things, you're lessening that burden on your body in the first place. And now it's detoxing on its own so much better. So yeah. 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 I mean, and a lot of people will like argue like, well, what's the point in buying organic? Isn't everything almost the same at the end of the day with like soil contamination and stuff like that? I mean, it really does make a difference, you know? And the other thing is you're supporting those farmers that are trying to support a more sustainable farming method versus like just supporting the conventional farmers who are throwing a bunch of poison on our food, you're actually supporting someone that's like going the extra mile to get those organic certifications and, you know, all of the policing that I guess they have to go through to like get their organic, you know, stamp and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it definitely matters at the end of the day, like you're putting a lesser load on your body, right? Like the less, lesser of the burden. Um, Yeah. you're, You're supporting like the way of our future. Like everyone should be doing organic farming. So. Mm -hmm. Amen. Preach it. It makes a difference. <laughs> it makes a difference. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's just the mindset thing and it's just where people are at, you know, detoxing from just 
you know, um, maybe drinking too much over the holidays. I was like, going to say, I hate yeah. my Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like I could definitely be guilty to that in the <laughs> New Year's. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I've gotten better in my old age, but <laughs> yeah. But seriously, what's so interesting though? Like I think everybody wants to detox in January because I think we come off the holidays. You ate a lot of sugar, you drank a lot of alcohol. Like myself included, you know, I need to cut back on the alcohol a bit, and I'm going to. Um, but I think that it's just like this mindset of January is the time to detox. But, like, from a biological perspective and, like, how our bodies were kind of meant to kind of go throughout their cycles, it actually makes a lot more sense to detox in the spring, like, between seasons. Like, it actually makes zero sense to detox in the winter because that's when our bodies are meant to be hibernating and holding on to things. And naturally, with the change of seasons, as the flowers are blooming and things like that, that's the time when, you know, historically and naturally speaking, our bodies are wanting to cleanse and let things go and things like that. Like winter is not the time for that winter. We want to hunker down and hibernate. So it's just kind of ironic. I think that we're so hyper-focused on it in January. Mm-hmm. I love that you just yeah. made that point. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's so, 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 so true. Like spring comes around, you know, you're shedding the winter weight. You're coming out of the hole. You're waking up to the sunshine like that's really a mm-hmm. kind of cleansing time, you know, things are being born and growing and there's so much new life coming on the planet. Um, and it's like the middle of January, it's like, what the hell? It's like most places are under 12 feet of snow or whatever it might be. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, I'm so glad you made that point. Like, you know, it's all about seasonally taking care of your body. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely. It's more appropriate for sure. Mm-hmm. So that was yeah. a really good point. I really appreciate it. Thanks. That. Yeah. Thank you. That was really good. All right. All right. So Do have any more questions? I feel like we kind of covered all of them. Mm-hmm. Wait, let's see. Do we want to talk about the difference? So we have another question here. Vicki, how do you say this? Anne to Paul? Oh, Anita. Anita. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, yeah, cleansing sorry, yeah. maybe falls under different detox, but uh, all but are there different types of cleanse diets? I don't are know different I types of cleanse. But... Um, I think if she's asking if there's different types of cleanses, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and like if she's asking what the difference is between a cleanse and a detox. That's a good question. I don't know, like, by the pure definition, I think they get blended together. Mm-hmm. I feel like they do, too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Wait, what's the question? It, let's just cut this out. It doesn't really make sense. Okay, yeah. I yeah. just need to know. What, are, what, what time are we at? Like, 45 or what are we at? It doesn't show. Ooh. It's 5.08 p.m., so we're probably, like... 30, 40 minutes in. Okay. Let me see if it shows. Yeah, since I like messed up her name and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> will she be okay? April. <laughs> will, will she be okay? Yeah, I, I, think, I think we talked it. Oh, shit. I got to plug in my phone. Um, I think we talked about it before. Yeah, I think. She had that other question, which I think we also answered. She asked about like liver support. She said like I see people saying – you know, that they're supporting their liver. What does that look like? Do you think we answered that when I, Oh yeah. I feel like we kind of talked about that because yeah. she also asked me that question. Okay, cool. For sure. Cool. Okay, Megan. That's so it. we'll just pause cool. for a second, Vicki, and then we'll uh, start back up. Was there anything okay. else that you guys really wanted to talk about? Cause otherwise we'll wrap it up. I don't think so. Okay. The phone's also dying. So <laughs> and I can't get it charged. Excellent. Okay, so Megan, it's now 5.09 p.m. Okay. or 6.09. Okay, okay, okay. If that helps at all. Well, you'll know at least it's like right towards the end. Yeah, no, this is fine. I got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll pause and then. 
All right, Vicki. Well, I know we could talk to you for many more hours as we, as we normally do, but we will go ahead and wrap mm -hmm. up. Where can our audience find you? You can find me on my website. It's restoringrootswellness.com. You can find me on Instagram at restoring underscore roots. I also have a Facebook page. It's just Restoring Roots Wellness. You can find me there. Um, but those are the best places. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Always fun getting to chat with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, for thanks the for time. having me, ladies. Yeah, it was a good time. I hope to talk to you guys again soon. Definitely. All right. Bye, guys.